Hello my beauties, how's everyone doing? If you are new here, my name is Zona Za and I welcome you to my channel. Here we talk a beauty, lifestyle, fashion, hair, femininity and faith. You name it, we are on it. Please become part of this fast growing family by hitting the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. And to my returning beauties, welcome back. It is lovely to see you again. On today's video, we are doing questions and answers while I get ready for just a day during the month of love. Could be a date, could be anything, but I just felt like, okay, we're entering into February, which also happens to be my birthday month. And the month of love altogether is one. I decided to create this fun pink eyeshadow look. So the first question says, how do you maintain your relationship with God, especially in hard times when prayer feels pointless. Just speak to God. You know, most of the time we want to have structure to our prayers, you know, pray in scripture. But sometimes you just feel like, okay, well, even the scripture is not coming to mind to deal with what you are going through. Like there's no scripture that you're thinking of. So for me, I'll just have a conversation with God, uh, like person to person and say, look, God, I'm going through this right now. I need you to come through for me. My father, my father, this is going on. I've prayed about this. I've not seen any change yet. Please, um, whatever lesson that you're teaching me through this, give me the strength to endure. And there's different ways to pray. There's the prayer of faith, there's supplication. So sometimes a simple prayer of faith, like this one that we're talking about now, is all you need. But just to caution you, just watch out always and, and pray, even if it doesn't feel good to pray. When I feel like, okay, I've exhausted even this conversation thing, I'll just switch on some worship music and worship, worship my sorrows my worries away and i'll be intentional with it i have my own songs that i know if i play this one i'm going to cry that's for sure i'm just gonna cry out to god because remember the holy spirit intercedes for us you know it's those moments where you know he is there right in your heart knowing exactly what you need keep that faith every single time you feel like you are not able to pray and sometimes we worry ourselves about praying about something that we've, we've already prayed for we are just not patient enough to see it come to life and we have this particular timeline in mind wherein we feel like the prayer should already be answered so chances are the time you are worrying and not feeling like praying God is already up to something or even that silence what seems to to be a silence to you or a delay is actually the answer that you need i don't know how many times i've prayed for things and god does not give them to me and i later realize that oh okay so that is why you didn't answer that prayer or you kept quiet so that was the answer you know what i mean because remember we're dealing with sight beyond what we see god has he sees everything he knows people's hearts he knows every situation the behind the scenes of what we think we want anyway i'm gonna use this uh, palette from nouveau ink beauty they gifted me this last year i've used it a few times on my clients when you don't feel like praying when you feel like prayer is pointless just talk to god have a simple conversation all these things that are worth having and that make us better don't always feel nice you don't have to feel nice to pray you don't have to have an emotionally charged relationship with god we must teach ourselves actually to trust god and be sure that things are going to work out regardless of how we feel 
the next question <laughs> how did you meet your hubby all these questions are all over the place there's no particular area because i said anything goes we met on facebook we have a common friend so me and this common friend went on a friend k so my friend posted our pictures my husband saw me on my friend's pictures and then sent me a friend request i saw him and believe it or not instantly i saw that mm, this guy decided not to accept his friend request because i was just going through a stage where i wanted to be single you know i wanted to just chill out and see things and just experience myself just being alone i noticed that okay he's a believer as well from his profile it was public so i was like yeah, okay but never accepted the friend request just left the friend request there because i didn't want him to add me again or to see that i rejected him so i just left it there and then this one time i'm going through my facebook i accepted his friend request and then he just started to like my pictures all the time just liking my pictures just making sure that i notice him and i did notice him it was easy to notice him when i'm telling you that from the first time that i saw the friend request i started to look at him and all that so he would comment on my pictures complimenting me and i would ignore his comment i'd never like even say thank you or whatever i'll just keep his and I don't know i was just being i guess childish i don't know but i just didn't know what to say i don't want to seem overly eager <laughs> but i saw that mm, he wants me to notice him and then this one time he also commented again complimenting me and then another common friend of ours also com commented on the same picture i responded to my friend and i skipped his comment and then he came and commented on my response to my friend's comment he said oh so you do respond to your friends what does one do to become part of the elite and that gets their comments responded to yo i was so embarrassed i laughed and i said i'm sorry about that thank you so much called him by his name and it's like yeah you're welcome you're so beautiful I was blushing. I literally jumped when we finally spoke. So guys, it's so hot. I can't open the aircon while filming. I really, I felt so bad that he had noticed that I was ignoring him the whole time. So after we had spoken on Facebook, I sent him on like on the open post. I sent him a DM and I said, "Are you happy now that I've responded to?" Your comment responds and says i am more than happy but you know what would make me even happier and i said what <laughs> he said if you could give me your number so that we can have a chat I'm like what why do you want my number guys listen to this old man's pickup line he says because i want to invade your space i'm like what do you mean invade my space you know have, get to know you be close to you call you and we have endless conversations oh i'm like oh okay straight to the point so you want to invade my space invade my space you did i mean i mean i'm, I'm still here you, you changed my surname everything after then i gave him the number he called me immediately we spoke i'm telling you no lies on that first call we were on the phone for one hour 30 minutes just talking and i remember i was driving from work and my son was already away for the school holidays so i was not even rushing anyway put him on speaker in the car just driving slowly and just chatting chatting he asked me about my son i think he had seen a picture of my son he says no he doesn't have any kids i'm like oh lucky you just jokingly and i said to him how did you manage to you know stay that way because guys let's face it a lot of young people these days 
have kids. He said, no, I didn't grow up in a formal family structure and I've always wanted different for my kids. This is genuinely the first conversation I've had this with this guy. And then I'm like, oh, okay, well, I have my own, I, I have a son and he says, oh yeah, I've seen him. He's a lovely young chap. Back then, I used to post my son quite a lot. I used to post his pictures, his videos. So a lot of people that would see me, they, they would immediately see my son as well. So he was just saying all those things about him. I was like, okay, cool. And then he said he's gonna call me later as he was about to leave the office as well and do a few things, but he still wants us to talk. And I was like, okay, I was looking forward to the call again. I felt I don't have to play any games. I just can have an open conversation with the guy. I just, you know, instantly felt like this is the kind of person I'd, I'd talk to. Around eight, he called and we talked about lots of things again. And then he suggested we meet for a date and I was, I was game. Remember I told you that I had taken time out but I didn't even think twice when he invited me out. <laughs> I was like, okay, we will we'll do it. And then he initiated a day and I said, I'm not available, but I was. And then how about a different day? And then we agreed on that day. Long story short, I went on that day. It's a little noisy today. I hope you're not that distracted and you can still listen to the story. So on that date, yo, I was bright and early, guys. I was so early. <laughs> uh, anyone who knows me knows that I struggle with this. It's something I've had to be intentional about now, being on time. But for that date, trust me, I was there. I think it's the only time that you can say I was ready before he was because I got there and just as I was arriving at the mall, he says, okay i'll see you shortly so i arrived there before him so in about five minutes of me there he arrived and i was like Woo when i first saw him i was like oh okay ah i can dig i remember I, I thought he was short when i first saw his pictures when i was going through his page but when he arrived he was not as short as he looked on the pictures I was like, oh, okay, whoever's been taking your pictures is not doing a great job. So instantly we had a conversation. And I don't know how to share a story and not be detailed. I'm sure you've noticed by now. I'm realizing that I'm wasting so much time on this one question. At that restaurant, we stayed there up until around 10. But midway through the day, we started talking about lot of things our religious beliefs and all that and then i quickly ran to the bathroom and i was looking at the mirror like whoa girl this is the one i tell you no lies i knew right on our first date that i had met my husband i was saying to myself the search is over second date we talked some more we dated for a while then we took a break I'll talk more about this on my dating advice video. We got back together and we got married. So that's how I met the love of my life. Long story short, you guys do not ignore those inboxes, you know, but pick wisely, obviously, and do your research about a person. Oh, another thing that I also found out that he saw me on my friend's page. He also checked out my pictures and saw that we worked for the same company, so he, he says he did acquire my number, but he was just scared to just call me without getting the number from me. So that is the story of how I met the love of my life. The next question is, how old are you? I don't know how many times I get asked this when I tackle any sort of question and answer Content, I am 33 years old. I turn 34 on the 28th of February. Yes, that's it. Nothing else, nothing exciting. This is my last year on the youth bracket as per the South African standard or is it an international standard? 
So that's it. Born in 88. People are gonna say, I look up. Nope, I am 33 and I look 33 and I am happy looking 33. Thank you very much. Keep it up. But guys, it is rude to ask a lady her age. I am old. Don't you know who else? <laughs> the next question says, how do you drive traffic to your YouTube channel? Okay, I started off with quite a nice following on Facebook, interestingly. I've had lots of things and competitions that I've done on Facebook. I have a radio background. I've entered a radio competition in the past. I've done a bit of TV. Please don't Google my TV work. I get so embarrassed when I see myself there. So a lot of the people that I have on my Facebook know me through all that previous work. And the TV work is quite old, guys. Almost 10 years now since I did. It's over 10 years, actually. I did the work in 2009, straight out of varsity. So a lot of people that I have on my social media, on my Facebook, are from those days, believe it or not. Whatever project I've done, I'll always call on those people on my Facebook to say, please support me on this. I've entered a radio competition, which I never won, which my friend, whom I met my husband through, actually won for that radio station over the years. The people I have on my Facebook account are very supportive of my endeavors. And of course, the makeup clients. I have a lot of clients with my makeup that I have built great relationships with. So for someone who doesn't have any of these things that I'm talking about, I would say use the relationships that you already have to get people to support you out getting everyone to subscribe. And I'm giving this information, being fully aware that I've not arrived yet. I don't feel like I've arrived at all when it comes to my YouTube. I've, I'm only at what, 13.6 as of this morning. So I've not arrived yet, but whoever's asking this feels obviously that I'm doing better. So use those relationships that you already have. Use whatever traffic that you have from other platforms and drive it to your YouTube. It's important to start off with what you already have to help you get recommended more and to get those numbers going. Another tip it is to, when you create, maybe I can do an, a more in-depth video on this. When you create your content, it's important to use stuff that's already in demand and just personalize it to yourself. You know, try not to introduce like brand new topics that no one is searching for. I did a lot of research before starting my channel. I learned of this concept of identifying the person that you're speaking to. This is not exactly niching. Having a niche, I feel having a niche can be very limiting. For example, if I had said that this is a makeup channel, then I wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that I'm able to do. But have an idea of your viewer. So the idea really is to have whatever few people that you have managed to get to watch your videos, being satisfied and rating your videos up. So do create that ideal person that you're speaking to. I know mine. I'm targeting people that are around my age, mid 20s to mid 30s. I know the issues that I've had challenges with in, in these ages. I'm not talking hearsay. So I'm just being that girl who's starting the conversation that you probably are having with your girlfriends or you wish someone would chat with you about. These are from experience and on personal research. So it's really important to know who you are talking to because you want to retain who you already have and keep happy who you already have. Another way that is quite organic that I managed to get people coming in to watch my channel is to support other channels. For me, I feel, I feel like learning from other people that are where I am, that are relatively still starting out make things better for me i comment and engage on their content i ask questions they are still humble 
you know, as compared to just worrying about um, trying to be smart money who's already made it big. Just chatting with everyone who is around about at the same stage that you are in. They will be more willing to help and they will be excited to have someone reach out to them. That's been the case with me. So yeah, those are the few things that I can think of at the top of my head. Do let me know if you want me to do a more in-depth video regarding this subject. On to the next question. How do you stay away from sexual scene in bracket fornication as a single Christian woman? This for the longest time in my Christian walk as a single lady, I struggled with because I... I just feel like even my first sexual encounter I was manipulated into so by the time i'm strong in the lord i have already lost my virginity and once you lose your virginity it's like what's there to protect that's how i felt so in hindsight for someone who is trying to you know get their house in order just know that this is obviously for someone who has lost their virginity just know that you still have value you still have a lot of you to protect and there is grace that the fact that you already are sexually active does not mean that's where you should be and you shouldn't care who you sleep with and and just go ahead and do it that's not the mindset god can renew you as he did my life i was renewed from many years of feeling shame and guilt another thing that helped me to steer myself back into caring about my body and preserving my temple and not fornicate even though i had already started i once came across this video by juanita Binham, and she was talking about the dangers of fornication the name of the video is called normal sheets i think once you understand the depth of what you are getting yourself into when you have sex it helps a lot because most of the time in the church we are just told not to have sex and we know that it's a scene but when you don't understand the depth the the spiritual connotation to it and all these bonds that you stand to make and how dangerous they will be for you going forward then you will see why god says we need to preserve ourselves as opposed to just being told that don't have sex and you don't even know what the ramifications are you just want to enjoy yourself get to understand why you shouldn't have sex for me having sex prematurely resulted in a lot of issues that really affected me in a big way that, that affected all aspects of my life my confidence and you know having a child when i had not planned to have a child whom i love right now but there's just so much i struggled with my son before i got married i struggled in raising him not even financially just a present someone there to help me raise my child but we did everything that we could but you can avoid that by just steering clear and then now just to fast forward to when i eventually decided to go celibate that video helped me a lot and i know it scared me a bit i won't lie but i think sometimes you know we do need something that's gonna scare us into not doing something as humans we just want to enjoy allow yourself the lessons that have come with you participating in that and not go there and not go there um unplanned pregnancies in some cases even diseases a lot can mess up your life feelings of worthlessness think about those things and most importantly speak to god about it speak to god about it ask him to give you strength to preserve his temple he can't make you and not give you the mechanisms to maintain avoid situations where you have to justify yourself or you have to wave off someone wanting to have sex with you this will be being in intimate settings with someone 
you know you don't want to throw yourself in situations where you have to exercise restraint especially if you've had it so you know what what it is as opposed to someone who doesn't even know don't try yourself you know don't don't thrust yourself there and just just know yourself know that whatever you're doing is for yourself it's not to prove a, a point to anyone but you're preserving yourself for yourself you're not trying to prove a point to the church that you can go without sex you're trying to look out for number one because sometimes we we don't see the actual value in preserving ourselves because we attach it to institutions and forget about the surroundings and what people will say know that you're preserving yourself for yourself and talk about temptation to someone that you trust or is not someone who's just gonna say hi scratch on me just do it talk to someone that you trust and say you know i've been battling with this i've just been feeling like doing it just talk and they will advise you this next question is are you going to resign from a full-time job and become a full-time content creator uh no not at the moment that is not something that i feel i am ready to do because with my full-time job i do pretty much what i do with content creation it's part of the things that i do there because i do marketing i do social media monitoring so at this point i don't feel like it is something that is holding me back from anything i don't feel like my full-time job has interrupted my flow because there's a lot of leeway there to do all this content in perfect harmony together and of course with the makeup i do makeup on weekends so nothing about it clashes yet plus i'm not making enough money with content creation to actually say i quit so if anything changes i feel like i'm raking in the dough with social media maybe i would consider but now it's not something i'm looking into but god has a bigger plan so if he leads me there then i would i would gladly shift into that direction the next question is how does it feel to be a god-fearing woman to be a god-fearing woman for me actually i always think of myself as a child of god as opposed to woman of god because i feel like as a child of god that's who i'll forever be and as a woman yes there is a great comfort to knowing that i'm a woman but when i come to god i want to be as vulnerable as possible i want to be as myself as possible i'm forever trying to remind myself that i'm a child here this is my father this helps me to allow myself to have my faults and come boldly into his throne of grace and say this is me i'm your child love me uh, because i don't know i just feel like when i start to think of myself as this woman of god which i am yes i don't want to let that go to my head i might start to feel like i'm independent i'm doing this i'm so grown and all that i'm gonna remain a child of god forever and to be god fearing for me means i yield to god's way over my own i am forever wrestling to be that girl that god wants me to be i never feel like i've arrived and i know for sure that i will never arrive until i go to him and he says well done so for now i always just treat myself as a child of god to be directed by him ready to be provided for by him to be comforted by him you know i'm a baby i'm god's baby so it feels great to be a god-fearing person it feels greater to be a child of god will you be doing any collaborations with other women content creators ah uh, yes so if you remember i've done a collaboration with my friend onela but for future i don't know there aren't many women where i am that are doing youtube or like maybe in the social media space that i genuinely connect that i know on a personal level i don't want to have something that's so fake and so planned that we have to script it even you know i want to 
do things organically if i meet someone as the year goes and they're keen on working together then yes if something happens if we meet and we talk things out and we were, we have a great idea then i'm open to that I'm, I'm big on collaboration i just still feel like it needs to be genuine it needs to be a real conversation otherwise i don't want to pretend to be something i'm not or have the other person come here and pretend to be something they are not i know maybe you're talking about just doing content maybe doing hair or doing makeup and all that still i i like my content to have a lot more meat than just a look creating a look so i feel it would be legit if i bring in someone that has pretty much the same views as mine we don't know what the future holds i'm open i'm open to it so yeah last question says with your most recent fast was it a whole day and night or did you break at a particular time each day and the answer is it was a partial fast so that means at a certain time of the day i would break our breaking time was six o'clock wherein we would gather as a church and pray on some days that you because i did a corporate uh, fast this time on days that i couldn't go to church because maybe i'm cooking or doing something i would pray at home during that fast everyone managed to be at home most days so i would pray and before breaking the fast because remember this is not just intermittent fasting this is prayer related maintaining myself throughout the day at the times i would be eating for example just feeding my spirit because the, the whole concept of fasting is to starve your flesh and feed the spirit so i would read the word of god in the morning midday afternoon and i'll permeate my spaces as i always do with worship music just to make sure that i'm in that constant zone for the free flow of the holy spirit how do you deal with office drama if you've had any yes i have experienced something like that at work and i felt like the boss lady was just you know trying to monitor me as a person to to manage me not my work you know just wanting to know what i'm doing and all that just micromanaging me i decided that okay i'm gonna try to do everything to my best abilities to give a less to talk about but i'll continue to see it continue i remember at one time i even cried at work that, that was the first and last time i ever cried this road is so busy guys i'm sorry about the notes so after i had cried i actually went back home and i told myself that that's the last time that something like that will ever happen to me i'm never gonna cry again at work i walked up to her and i told her that i'm not happy with how you've been treating me the way you're speaking to me in front of other people i don't appreciate that and it needs to stop i'm not your child here yeah. i'm not your child and since then she was like oh okay i didn't know da, 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 da. and ever since then it stopped because i spoke out because i feel like some people get away with a lot of things because we don't talk you just endure it and also covering your back just making sure at first that you are doing everything as you should that the person doesn't have anything to pin on you going forward you don't want to say someone is just giving you a tough time when you are not doing the work on oh, this last one i almost forgot about it anyway i'm finished with the makeup the question is what was your first reaction when you discovered that you are having twins i was i was shocked but not surprised i don't know if that makes sense because right after we discovered that we're pregnant my husband just said we're having twins and i told my sister as well that i'm pregnant and my sister was like you are definitely having twins and i was not showing the pregnancy symptoms started when i was literally just two weeks pregnant so you can imagine i was just feeling sick when i told both of them about it i was not showing so i can't say they saw the tummy that was big my sister was just like yo i can just feel it i'm so excited you're having twins and they kept saying that up until we had the appointment and they went to the appointment and then the pregnancy was um confirmed and then obviously between i think it was in 16 weeks or 18 weeks somewhere there then we discovered that we have any twins i was shocked that what my sister and my, my husband had said is actually 
confirm i actually did want to have twins i remember when beyonce had just had the twins i was obsessed with those kids being a boy and a girl and i always keep pictures of boy and girl twins on my phone but when it actually happens and you had not even prayed specifically about it at that particular time it's still a shock and a lovely surprise i also even saw a book yesterday that me and milani got a few years ago that had twins and we were so happy about that book boy and girl twins that we kept it and we kept thinking oh we're gonna have twins in our family milani would always say so it really was a shock that it really happened from all those years believing for it and forgetting about it and then actually see it happen and my husband was always excited about anything to do with twins after we had met when we were talking about having kids and all that he would always say he wants twins and he believes he's gonna have twins even on his instagram and his archives now we just saw that he posted something with twins it was a video of twins and he wanted that for himself so that was my reaction and that's the last question that i'm covering for this video thumbs up if you enjoyed this and if you have any extra questions about matters that we discussed you can leave that comment on the comment section or maybe just send me a dm on instagram and then i will answer further here is the final finished look nice and easy super simple like i like my beat we have that great balance that i always speak of the bright eye and a muted lip or a muted lip and a bright eye obviously i went for a bold eye what do you guys think please comment in the comment section down below if you enjoyed the video and creating this look and of course if you do create this look please tag me on your instagram okay i'll see you on my next one god bless you and i love you